Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to a new episode of the Tabletop Engineer. For those of you who've been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I took a couple months, actually three months off uh, of doing these videos. Uh, I had a health scare and um, the good news is the health scare is over. I am cancer free and uh, I do appreciate all of the goodwill, the messages, the prayers, everything you guys have sent my way. Um, I'm feeling good. Stress is gone <laughs> of having that lingering over, you know, over me. And uh, I'm back to work. I'm getting back to my uh, workshop here, and I've got tons of projects going. And so I'm ready to do a new video. And what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to make what is called a drop ship. It is a spaceship that I am using specifically for a very new game called Operation Last Train. And I'll put information below uh, so you can go find it if you're interested in playing. But in a nutshell, the game is, it's a war game, a skirmish war game. And it can, it's designed to be played solo or with a friend or multiple friends. It involves soldiers, science fiction soldiers, landing on a planet and rescuing civilians from bugs, aliens. In the game, your soldiers come down on the field they have to escort or get survivors to a dropship. And that dropship sort of becomes a target to get the civilians to. The game is only $5, the rules. And it's a donation made to Save the Children, which is a nonprofit. The idea of the game is that when the game is over, for every civilian that you rescued, you make another donation of 10 cents, 10 U.S. cents, to this charity. So if you save 10 civilians, you make a dollar, uh, a dollar donation. Definitely a great way to raise money for a nonprofit. Have some fun. I mean, you're paying to play a game, but wouldn't we all do that? So the dropship is the one key ingredient that I don't have. I have bug miniatures. I have soldier miniatures, but I didn't really have a dropship. So I've been making a bunch of dropships. And some of you who have been tuning into the live crafting that I've done on and off for the past few months on the Facebook channel have probably seen some of the dropships I've made. But this is a brand new dropship. Let me show it to you. It's two pieces, actually. It is a small spaceship right here, okay, and the drop part. This ship basically sits here, and the idea is that the ship comes down, lands, drops the containers off, and then takes off uh, to, to get away, and then we'll come back and get the things. But it's a, uh, it's a really cool, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I'm going to be teaching a bunch of 11 and 12 year old boys this summer how to play this game. We're going to do it during the summer break. And so I needed more than one dropship. So yet another dropship. I want you to watch uh, and follow along as I describe how I made this. And uh, hopefully you can duplicate it or come up with your own design. But let's get to the table and I'm going to show you how I made this. I started this project with just simple chipboard. Here I am cutting out an unusual shape. It's sort of an elongated uh, stop sign, octagonal shape. And this is going to be sort of the body of the main drop ship. And I need two of these. So I cut the basic shape out of chipboard and then scored along the folded edges. And then I cut uh, a basic octagonal shape by tracing it here from another piece of chipboard. I glued two of those, one on each side, to make a more solid box-like object. And then I cut a series of strips that I wrapped around each of these containers. Uh, these strips were scored so that they fold, and then I just used hot glue to glue them all the way around. And as you'll see in just a second, it gives the the container, uh, you know, a raised three-dimensional uh, element. Uh, instead of just being a plain box, uh, chipboard box. And then I went and I added other little elements, uh, small squares and things, just to raise the surface um, in other areas. After I got the two containers made, I needed to make the sort of main body that connected the two containers and I just made this up. I came up with an unusual shape. I cut two of them and then used chipboards to make the edge to hold them together and then I took this piece, added more detail work 
and I glued it between the two containers as you see right here. Now on the side of the containers, I wanted to put some foam detail work. So I just took my hot foam cutter, the Proxon, and I just cut some pieces so that they sort of had these beveled edges, right, like that. Uh, I, made, uh, I made one, two, three, I made four of these, two per container, and I just hot glued these onto the left and right side of the drop ship. You'll be able to see this in just a second for, with a top view of the uh, current container ship. Okay, so there are two of the beveled pieces uh, glued on that you can see. There are two on the other side. I don't know. You just can't see them very well. The next thing I did was I used more foam to create these struts. These struts are at an angle, and they are glued to that center piece between the two containers. And these will support a small, small spaceship that will drop the entire thing down to the planet and then lift off, leaving the more large structure uh, on the planet. So these were real easy to make. I just had to determine the uh, proper angle. I hot glued them on as you see here. And then I took additional chipboard and just added raised pieces for, for more detail. Now here I'm gluing two large pieces of foam together to make the body of the small spaceship and I used the hot wire uh, cutter to bevel the left and right edges. You can just see them on the top there that they're beveled. Uh, then I went to my junk drawer and I just grabbed a bunch of stuff. I grabbed some um, cones from a couple rockets, SD's rockets as you can see there, and then just other little bits and pieces of plastic. Glued it all together to make the engines and then glued the engines onto the side of the ship. And as you can see right here, I've got the ship and the main body all ready to go uh, for painting. But before I do that, there are some more details to be added. So again, I just went back with chipboard and I just started basically just gluing it wherever I felt it would look good with you know, having panels. I glued them onto the struts. I glued them onto the front and back of the containers. I glued some here, as you can see, onto the actual spaceship along with some little 3D printed uh, cannons uh, that I print for uh, another game called Gaslands, but it just seemed appropriate to put one on the ship. Basically just keep gluing chipboard. Here you can see I'm cutting a smaller octagonal shape down that will glue onto the front uh, of each of the containers. I next went back to my junk drawer and grabbed a bunch of plastic pieces. These are from a, a, a thing called the Vex Robotics Kit. I had a ton of them and they're all different angles and shapes and I just glued them wherever I felt they needed to be. So I raided my junk box, which has actually turned into two junk boxes. It's gotten so much junk in there. And what I've got for my drop ship is this. This is the base part. And this is the little ship that you know will be glued up top here. Let me see if I can do this so it doesn't fall and break. All right, so there you go. It doesn't look like much. It looks pretty horrible because of all the colors and the paper and stuff like that. But I have a very strong feeling that once it's painted, you know, primed and painted and weathered, it's going to look like a really cool drop ship. The idea is that this piece, you know, can lift away and drop this down to the planet. These are the escape modules that uh, soldiers or civilians would uh, climb into. Ship would come back down, connect, and off it goes. This is just sort of made up as I go. I mean, it's not... I wanted it to not have a standard science fiction familiarity. I didn't want it to look like a, a Star Wars ship or a Star Trek ship. I wanted it to be something sort of unique, but also be a little over the top. The game that I'll be playing this with called Operation Last Train is all about a mix of science fiction soldiers coming down to a planet to rescue civilians and get them off. And so I wanted something that was just, you know, very science fiction-y looking, but it didn't have to look, you know, sleek. Uh, it didn't have to have all kinds of weaponry on it and stuff like that. Uh, but it also needed to be something that could be placed on the table to indicate dropship. So up next is painting these uh, two and then gluing them together. And then there'll be some detail work. I've got to do some windshields on the little ship here. Okay. Uh, maybe some decals, numbering, things like that. 
definitely weathering. Uh, I also got some space up here that I want to add some stuff to on the front and the back. And uh, here's a side view of it. You can see these things angle back. So this is what it looks like. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll include a bunch of photos at the end of the video, uh, pre-painted and then post-painted, so you can take a look. Let's get to painting this thing. For this, I want to give this a standard military look and feel. A lot of gray, metallics, uh, very bland colors. So what I've done is I've selected some of the ones from this collection. These are all unopened, as you can see. Uh, we have pewter gray, uh, just pewter metallic, pavement, which sounds really interesting, uh, denim blue, and elephant gray. I'm going to use these five paints for the majority of this, and then I'll see if I want to bring some bright colors or some washed out colors in once it's all done. So I'm going to get started painting with these right now. I forgot to mention, of course, I primed the entire thing white <laughs> before painting it. But as you can see here, I just hit it with various shades of gray, uh, something called denim blue for the main body. Uh, there are some lighter shades of gray tossed in here and there, but ultimately the majority of the body of the dropship was painted uh, a plaid color called denim blue. It has a very, like a battleship type uh, color. It's not quite gray, it's not quite blue. Uh, in the video here, it looks more gray, but in person, there's a bluish tint to it, which really looks good, in my opinion. I finished up just some detail work, painting some of the engines and nozzles and stuff on the ship with some metallics. And once that was done, the project was done. And that's how you make a dropship, or at least one variety of dropship. Uh, I can't wait to put this on the table uh, for a game. I've been playing the game solo, but I'm getting ready to introduce a bunch of my son's friends to the game. And we're gonna play cooperatively. Uh, normally in a solo game, you play with six soldiers. If you play with two people, each person is supposed to bring three soldiers, and three players would bring two, and so on. Um, I'm not sure quite how we're going to do it. I want to have you know three or four players per table cooperating, um, but I want to have one dropship per table, and I'm going to have at least two or three tables for these, these boys. So I've got enough dropships, and now what I need to do is make some terrain for the uh, various um, uh, scenarios for Operation Last Train. And that'll probably be in some upcoming videos. I do have some ideas and we'll, we'll get to those. But listen, if you have been waiting to try a skirmish war game, or maybe you are a fan of skirmish war games and you're looking for another one, you can't go wrong. Operation Last Train <coughs> is very inexpensive. $5 for the rules. Again, check the description below. I'll put some links where you can go get more information about the game. Uh, it's meant to be played solo or cooperatively. So if you don't have anybody to play with, check out the rules because you can play it solo. And I have to tell you, I'm having fun playing the game by myself. I have six soldiers, a whole bunch of bugs. I now have drop ships and I have some terrain or, you know, some random terrain. But uh, I want some more specific science fiction terrain. So we'll, we'll see about getting to that. But anyway, thanks for joining me and thank you for being patient with me as I took the much needed time off to address uh, my health issues. Everything's good. Doctor's given me a clean bill of health and I am now able to return to my workshop and get back to a more regular schedule of videos. So again, thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm glad to be back and I will see you next Friday with another how-to video. This is DM Jim. Take care. See you next week.